Dr. Charlotte Lacroix is dual degree and also the founder and CEO of Veterinary Business Advisors. They provide a wide range of practical business and legal services to veterinarians and their advisors. Thanks so much for being here today. Well, thank you, Natalie. So shifting gears to another hot topic in the industry right now, CBD. <laughs> I know that there's a lot of good information and probably misinformation out there for veterinarians to hear, but I'd love your perspective from both the medical and the legal side of what we need to know. So CBD as a product seems to be promising, but we don't know as a product for what. Is it a therapeutic product? We know that we have two FDA uh, drugs that have been approved, so they're clearly they're safe and effective, and they have a therapeutic purpose. Not that I think we could use those under Amduca to treat animals. I think they're extremely uh, expensive. Uh, but you know, the market is flooded with this whole CBD concept, and what there's a lot of misinformation there. We cannot use CBD to treat anything. It is not a drug, right? And um, the confusion also is in the law. So, for example, you know. There, in the states, they have allowed the use of CBD by human doctors. But that doesn't apply to us as veterinarians. And CBD is no different than any other product we would pick off a shelf, is that if it is not an FDA-approved product that's safe and effective, how can we stand behind the product and say it has therapeutic um, aims. We don't know anything about these products. We don't know anything about their manufacturing either. So a client brings you a vial to you and say, what do you think? We have no idea how much CBD has in there. I mean, it could be snake oil for all we know, right? <laughs> and I think as veterinarians, we need to behave responsibly. We are the evidence-based profession here. And yes, there's promising research. Yes, there's clinical studies. Of course, it's out there. But before we go in and recommend this product to our clients, I think that's a stretch. We're not there yet. People are encouraging us to do it. We're confused because people treat themselves with it, but we can't treat animals. And in fact, which you may already know, is that we can't even discuss it in many states. Now, what's interesting is those laws are being changed or challenged also so that veterinarians can discuss it. I think we should be able to discuss it with clients. That doesn't mean we should recommend it to treat any particular condition, even though there might be evidence out there that is in the gathering phase. Mm -hmm. But that's, you know, that goes above and beyond. And nor is it a supplement. There's no such thing as a, an animal supplement for CBD. And again, we're confusing human medicine or FDA law and animal FDA law. And CBD, I mean, there's so much money to be made in there. It's, a billion, it's going to be a billion dollar industry, right? And Pet owners don't understand the difference either. Like, well, I can take CBD and, I, and it, it's not a problem, right? But that doesn't mean that me as a veterinarian, I can recommend that to your pet because, first of all, I have no idea what's in that vial that you're, there, there's no good manufacturer, there's no regulation, there's no nothing. And we don't actually have any studies that show that it's safe and effective in animals. We've got human studies, but that's just all in the process. So I shouldn't, I don't think we should get ahead of our, ourselves, but we should be able to counsel clients and say, look, we don't know what this product does. Yes, there's anecdotal evidence, but you should be careful because these companies from which you're buying products, nobody's regulating how much CBD is in there. We, nobody knows. So wonderful talking points for veterinarians in practice like myself who have clients coming in every day asking about CBD. But what if we're looking for more reliable information and resources about CBD, especially within our states? So I want to be careful with something that you just said, Natalie, is that there are some states you can't even talk about it, which I think is an extreme, because you should be able to say that you can't talk about it, and this is why, because we don't really know much about what it actually does. Right. Um, Reliable sources, so AVMA has a lot of reliable sources on this. So I would go to the AVMA website. Um, you know, they, they've put in some, some really good information on there. I would go to your state VMA and ask them, you know, certainly as well, because they'll be familiar with what's going on in your state legislature as to what you can say or cannot say. Can you at least discuss it? Mm -hmm. Because clients are coming to us as of having authority on this, right, and credibility. And for us to turn around and say, well, my state legislature won't allow me to speak about this is, you know, that's a non-answer. And it's not sad. And then the client, you know where the client's going to go? They're going to go someplace else and get the wrong information. Because there are people selling these products. There are even people in our own industry that are saying, yes, this is OK. You know, it's OK to, to treat 
uh, pets with uh, CBD oil because you know it has it has anti-inflammatory process or um, you know it helps with arthritis or it helps with seizures and again that's anecdotal. I mean there's the studies are in the process and it's promising, but we have to we have to be distinguish between fact you know established fact versus early process. What would be a good talking point or points that veterinarians can talk to their CSRs or reception team if they have clients calling up and asking about CBD use on the phone? What should they direct them to so that it doesn't just look like you've just mentioned of mm -hmm. just shutting them down and then a client calls practice B down the street and they get different information and feel more supported? What are some talking points that the, your CSR should feel comfortable with? So I think the CSR can explain to M Mrs. Jones, for example, that you know this is fairly new and recent phenomenon, not only for humans, but animals as well. And, we, and until we can get more information and products that are actually labeled for animal use, or products that have been labeled for human use that have been successfully used in animals to treat certain condition, it's very difficult for us to provide any current recommendation. And uh, we don't know, you know, the concentration that's in these vials. They're, you, need, you should know that they're totally unregulated. Um, there doesn't seem to have been a lot of harm, but that doesn't mean it can't happen. We know that, you know, compounded products, there's been great disasters with that, both in the animal world and the human world. Mm -hmm. So we do need to, you know, to, to exercise caution. We can't give you advice on any products that you're uh, using, except to say, to be cautious when you're using these products. This has been so helpful. I think it really um, puts in a, a little more clarity about what we really should be discussing, if allowed to, but where we can search for some of that, again, reliable information state to state. So thank you so much for your time and your expertise. Thank you, Natalie.